Hey guys, Chase Christopher here, and today I'm just going to do a quick video on how to wax your skis or snowboards. So, why do you need to wax your skis? Basically, the reason is to help increase the longevity and reduce the friction when you are skiing on the skis. So, your base material is kind of like a it's kind of like a skin. It's a poly material that like skin can become dehydrated over time. So as you're skiing and riding, it'll start to dehydrate or lose the wax that's that's in it. And um, when that happens, the friction is increased. So it feels like you're sliding on sticky snow, which can be annoying. And then uh, the material can also dehydrate and start to recede away from your bases, which um, can leave the edges exposed to being ripped off um, or damaged by rocks or logs or anything hard that you hit. And so basically it'll just dehydrate. And so um, it's an easy process that you can use to help just increase that longevity and then also make it so that they slide nicely as you're skiing. And the uh, frequency that you need to do it is about every three to 10 times, um, most people say, and that can depend on the snow conditions, but the easiest way to tell is either if it starts to feel like a sticky, um, sticky snow as you're riding or if you're looking at the base material, and especially on dark bases, you can see towards the edge, it'll start to become like ashy colored or a little bit more white. And so if you see that, you know um, you need to wax your skis. And you can never wax your skis too often, so um, the more the better. Uh, so to wax, you just need a few tools. The first thing is a vise. You can use saw horses or something just to set your skis on, or else you can buy a vise. Um, that's made for it or like I did I just made one at home It's pretty um, inexpensive and made a video about how to do that as well so um, you can check that out if you care to and then there's um, you need an iron obviously and a lot of people like to see if they can use like an old household iron and while the idea is very similar in the irons um, there's actually they don't really interchange that well and the reason is the household irons they have the holes in the base that can the wax can go into um, and cause problems and they also the bigger issue is that they don't have a good temperature control ability when you are waxing uh, so the the commercially available waxing irons that you can get for skiing they have like a thicker base material with no holes that um, has a very good temperature control so depending on the type of wax you're using you'll need a different um, temperature on your iron and so um, it's much easier to find and hold with those irons. So you need the iron and then you'll need the wax obviously and wax is uh, you can go down the rabbit hole of wax and get wax for a specific temperature range that you're skiing in you know from cold cold weather powder snow all the way up to warm spring snow um, you know corn snow and they will perform you know as optimal as possible in those ranges or you can get an all-around wax and that's kind of what I do just because I don't wax my skis every day and I don't know what the uh, conditions are gonna be like next week so um, I just use an all all temperature range wax and um, it works well for me and so you need the wax you need a plastic scraper for scraping the wax off after you're done waxing um, preferably one with a 90 degree cutout in the um, corner and that's just used for scraping the edge off and then you need some brushes um, or a brush at least uh, there's a variety of different materials that you can get in brushes ranging from steel or brass all the way down to like horse hair i think is the the finest i can get um, i personally just use a nylon and a uh, horse hair brush and that's just used for cleaning off the base and, and getting the remainder of the wax out after you're done scraping. And then you need rubber bands or something to capture the brakes on your skis so that they're not in your way when the ski's upside down, you're trying to work on the surface. And um, you need a base cleaner and that can be a specific base cleaner that you can buy commercially or else I just use rubbing alcohol and a towel and I just um, rub it on. So basically to wax your skis, First, you just need to um, secure them in your vise or wherever you're gonna work on them. And then start by locking the brakes out of your way using the uh, rubber bands. If you don't have rubber bands, you can actually use like string, make a loop out of it, twist it to uh, shorten um, it if you need to, or even I've used duct tape um, is another, another option. So you lock the brakes out and then you need to clean off the base. So I'd start with just a brush and use that to get any dirt or any debris that could be left on there from when you're skiing or um, any old wax that's still in there. Brush away, then use your base cleaner, alcohol, rubbing alcohol, wipe it all off. Um, and once it's nice and clean and dry, you can start waxing. 
To do that, just set your iron to the um, correct temperature for your wax. If it's listed, if it's not, you just basically want it to have it to a point where the wax is melting off the iron so that you can drip it onto your ski, um, but not too warm to where it starts to smoke because that is burning the wax as well as um, once you start applying it to your ski, it can actually burn the base of your ski as well. So don't have it wax, um, uh, excuse me, don't have it smoking. And um, once you start dripping the wax on, you just kind of do a, a go around the circumference of the ski on the edges and then fill in in the middle where you need to. You don't have to cover it with um, the drops because the next step is just take the iron and run it from the tip to the um, tail and just use the iron to warm up the base and spread the wax out as you go. So like I mentioned earlier, the, the uh, um, base material is kind of like a skin and so when you warm it up, um, it, it basically the membrane like opens up and is more receptive to the wax and so you need to warm it up adequately but you don't want to stay in one spot for too long. Um, you can burn um, the, the base material as well so just don't sit in like the same spot for like 15 20 seconds i'm um, just kind of keep moving around and so once you spread the wax around um, get good coverage on the whole ski set it aside um, work on the other one and then um, you want to let them cool down to get completely to room temperature so people say the minimum is like 15 minutes um, if you can wait an hour or two hours or even overnight that's even better um, you can't wait too long before you start scraping and so once it's once you're ready to scrape, you just put it back on the vise and then start at the tip using your plastic scraper and you're just gonna scrape all of the wax off. So um, once it's cooled, that membrane has kind of captured the wax that you um, applied to it and that's what needs to stick around. The rest needs to go. So you just take the plastic scraper, scrape from um, the front to the back and get rid of all of that wax material that you can. Um, use that 90 degree cutout on your scraper if you have one to clean off the edges. And then once you've scraped everything away that you can, then take your brushes, start with a stiffer brush and work to the finer one ones. And that's just to get the excess um, wax off and out of the base material. There's kind of like a um, ridges, very microscop microscopic ridges in your um, base material that kind of help with the, the moisture getting um, passed out and also preventing like a suction um, to the snow. So the brushes just help clean out that structure in the base of your skis. And once you're done with that, you're good to go. And uh, yeah, pretty simple process. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is when it comes to wax, you cannot use candle wax. Um, it's a pretty common question, but it's actually more the, the, the compounds that are in the wax made for skiing that do the, uh, do the work. So it needs to be a specific wax that's made for skiing um, and like in the past when I uh, first started waxing, I kind of thought it was kind of like waxing a, a surfboard or something that you're um, just trying to get wax onto. And so I'd just like rub on as much as I could and then leave it. And uh, it didn't take me long to realize that that's actually very counterproductive. Any wax that's left on the base actually just slows you down. It can get scraped away over time, um, but that's not really the purpose. So you have to use the right wax and, and get it all off when you're done. So. Yeah, and like I said, if you want to check out that um, video of how to make the vise that I made, uh, feel free to do so. And then comment any recommendations that you have. Um, I'm sure there's tips, tricks that other people have that um, would be good to hear. This method has worked well for me for a number of years, so uh, try it out. I think it'll do the same for you. Thanks.